seated. May the Lord bless you this morning. We're going to ask uh, Luke and Brother Messi if they come this morning to receive our tithes and offering. Thank you for the offerings last week, certainly for our families. Thank you for reaching out and touching them that we have. We appreciate your kindness so much. Lord, we love you because we get to give back to you, Lord. We praise you for everything that you've done for us, your promises, the hope that we have, what you're going to do. And we ask you, Lord, to bless this congregation that's been so centered over the years. Lord, to give and defend it. Bring honor to you in this area of your body. I will thank you for it now. In the name of Jesus, amen. amen.
morning. Good morning. Good morning. All right, um, so for some of you who do know me, which the majority does, I'm Dawn. Um, I'm Hope's daughter. Uh, for the rest of you, I'm Dawn and Hope's daughter. Okay, <laughs> so um, I would just like to uh, honor the Lord in prayer before I go into this. I'm going to give you a little bit of my testimony, and then I'm going to sing for you guys. So, um, Abba Father, we just come graciously before you to the throne of grace, Lord, and we just thank you so much for all that you do. Lord, I just ask that you would set a guard from our mouth, Lord, that I would speak what is right and true in your eyes, Lord, and that you would just bless somebody's soul out of this, that somebody would come to know you in this, and uh, that it would just resonate throughout your kingdom, Lord, to glorify you. you, in Jesus' name. Amen. Um, so I'm going to go to Romans um, uh, 8.33 through 9. I'm going to read a few scriptures, uh, just kind of detailing an outline of my life um, with the word. Um, so it says in Romans 8.33, Who shall bring any charge against God's elect? Is God who is, it is God who justifies. Who is to condemn? Christ Jesus is the one who died. More than that, who has raised but who is the right at the right hand of God, who indeed is interceding for us? Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? As it is written, for your sake we are being killed at all day long. We are regarded as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am sure that neither death nor life, nor angels nor rulers, nor things present nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. And then my other one is Zephaniah 3.17. Um, the Lord your God is with you. He is mighty to save. He will take great delight in you. He will quiet you with his love. He will rejoice over you with singing. Thank you, Jesus. I owe y'all, the ones who have been here since I was little, little tiny, an apology. I've come to know the Lord, and I've slipped away, and I ran away from him, and I owe y'all an apology. I knew the love of Christ, but it wasn't enough. I had to go find out what darkness apparently there was waiting for me, and I'm so sorry for that. So sorry. But the Lord has called me home yeah, through a yeah. program called Team Challenge. And now it is a human program, and it is, it is flawed. But God has brought the increase in it. And I like it in Team Challenge as a greenhouse. It protects the seed that they plant over and over inside of us. And as it's being protected in this uh, program, it... He, the Lord is cultivating and he's bringing the increase and he's letting these roots take hold and deep, deep into the ground so that the world doesn't overcome it and the world doesn't overtake it and then the world doesn't pluck it up and the, and the enemy doesn't sit there and sow weeds and tears into it. It is amazing what Team Challenge has done for me and what the Lord is doing through Team Challenge. Thank you, Jesus. Um, uh, I just wanted to um, kind of go into uh, how much I've changed, uh, how much I see that the Lord has changed me. Um, I was working, and I, I noticed this man that I was serving, um, he just kept staring and staring and staring, and I was like, um, can I get you anything else? And he was like, no, but I'm wondering, what is that in your eyes that I see? And I just smiled and I said, you see him, don't you? And he was like, I see light is what I see. And I said, that's the light of Jesus walking to and fro inside of me. And he said, you know, I used to know him. I used to be a preacher, but circumstances happened in my life. And I slipped away. I fell away from the faith. And I said, you know, I think you recognize the light because Jesus is calling you back again. Yeah. He's calling you back to his first love, your first love. And so... Um, not shortly after that, um, I was professing my faith to co-workers, and um, they just were not receiving it, you know, and I even had some of them start making fun of me, 
and they were um, laughing at me and calling me insane and dumb for thinking these things and for believing in these things and you know that I was uh, truth is not in me and stuff and I mean it broke my heart but not because they were making fun of me but because of the deception that they were under and I realized that these people if they didn't understand the love that I have for Christ and him for us as his people that we were made in his image that they were going to help and my heart broke for them. And the Lord revealed to me, he said, you know, I spent the majority of my life, Jesus speaking to me, he said, I spent the majority of my life on this earth under the same affliction that you're going through right now, watching the people under deception, <clears throat> making fun of me, and my heart breaks for them knowing that they're going to hell, and there's nothing I can tell them except the truth. And so... Um, I went home, my heart was still broken and everything, and um, I had so many good friends in this program that told me, you know, you have set up treasures in heaven, you know, this is amazing, this is an amazing thing, and I, the only scripture that kept going through my mind over and over was, count it all joy when you endure various trials, tribulations, and uh, temptations for the testing of your faith will produce uh, perseverance, and perseverance when it is finished will produce uh, make you perfect and lacking in nothing. And I just kept hearing this over and over, you know, count it all joy, count it all joy. So I woke up that morning with a new fire in my belly, and I was like, Satan, if you want to fight, you got one. I'm going to tell everybody about my Jesus, and I'm going to tell him and them and everybody that he loves you so much. Jesus loves you so much. The love of Christ, what can separate us from it? Nothing that I've done, nothing that I am going to do, you know, because I'm, you know, though a righteous man fall seven times, he gets back up. And trust me, I fall. And I am not under the illusion that I am still a sinner, but I am a saved person now going to heaven because of the grace of God in my life. And I've accepted Jesus and his grace and his love. Um, so with that, I'm just going to close with the scripture that I um, I stand on. Um, it was the first scripture that I that spoke to me in ever ever in my life. I memorized scripture before, but this was the first one that spoke to me. And it says um, it's Philippians 3:13 through 14. Brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself yet to take hold of it, but one thing I do. Forgetting what is behind, straining towards what is yes. ahead, I press on towards the goal to win the prize to which God has called me in Christ Jesus. Amen. And I'm going to sing for yes. you guys.
see the father and the daughter come home. Oh. Isn't it precious? Yes. That Jesus not only saves but builds people brings Amen. restoration. Yes. None of us have a hope without Christ, oh. but in Him, yes. every one of us, there's, there's such power there. Oh. Let's sing that song, My Life is in Your Hands. <laughs>
singers. Thank you, Don, for the testimony and song. God bless you. It was raining. By the time I got out of the shower, it was pouring. Mm -hmm. When we went to the pickup, it was raining and pouring. <laughs> Man, it was wonderful. There was water running everywhere. We've been praying for enough rain to fill up some of the tanks and stuff. I don't know how it was everywhere, but it was sure good good here. Such a, such a precious thing. You don't have to go very far in Texas to be out of water, so it's wonderful to have, to have some good stuff. We have visitors this morning. It's always a joy to have you in the house of the Lord. And we pray that when you come, you come to get close to Jesus. Jesus loves people. Yes, he does. The song that Don was singing, that when others seemingly rejected her, guess who was still looking her way? His name is Jesus, and He's looking for us today, every one of us. Everybody has ups and downs. We have times when we're flowing, we're happy, we're joyous. We have times when we're snappy and bent and a little bit crude. That, that's what Pray Through is all about. Every, everybody in the gospel circle needs that warming constant warming. I, I've done three uh, funerals in the last just a little bit, and uh, I could tell that they took, uh, they hurt my spirit. They, because you, you, you see the families weeping and crying and broken, and, and you see that over and over. It, it affects you. But we take our trouble to the Lord, and we leave it there. And like the scripture that Don was given out of Acts, or Romans chapter 8, nothing out there separates us from the love of God. When we get to where we can't love one another, we need to go to the altar and ask God to forgive us. Because the devil has used something or somebody to get between us and the relationship. And so uh, I've got to work on that pretty regular. Every once in a while, Connie will say something to me, and I'll say, Arr! <laughs> Before anything else gets out, I said, you know what, I could say that nicer. <laughs> I'm probably the only one out there that gets a little bit edgy sometimes. But if, if somewhere you fall, uh, oh, I see some smiles. Help me. <laughs> and so when we get there, we, we come to church and we pray, pray God, I, I want to have such a controlled system through the Holy Ghost that I'm, I'm, uh, I'm a... I, that people can see the love of God in me. It's not hard for them to see Danny Williams. That gets in the way all the time. But if they can see past that and see Jesus, then that reflection, we've got somewhere with our walk. And I don't know, wh when's the last time you ate somebody? I don't, don't answer me, but I mean, just not, even on the phone or whatever. You know, sometimes we, we prioritize our uh, Christianity just to what happens at church. But what happens outside of church is meaningful. Yeah. And so if you've got within the last few days or week that you've just climbed somebody's tree and shook all the fruit off of it, while you was doing that, you was knocking some fruit off of your own. And the world needs to see Jesus, not our callous side of, of uh, what, I, what I am. And man, I, I thought as I was going through these uh, funerals and I seen them people hurt and said, God, please let me. The Lord said, weep with those that weep and rejoice with those that rejoice. And so to, to break that out in my spirit, Lord, I, I don't want to get hard uh, at, at being a pastor or, or preaching funerals or what, whatever. I, somehow, God, let, let us stay tender in, in our walk before you. And that's, that's why I hope you come to church today, not just to see if, if the preacher had, the, had a good message or not, but to meet Jesus. If you meet him, the quality of the message won't interfere with your walk. If if you meet Jesus, you've, you've done what church is all about, and that's important. Genesis chapter 21, we're going to start reading in verse number 1. Genesis chapter 21 and verse number 1, we'll begin reading. It's wonderful to have our scriptures up on the board, and 
some of those, one, one of the funerals that we had was here in our sanctuary, and Sister Leatherwood was so precious to come and, and run the screen. Yeah. And man, uh, yeah. Uh, and John, John's uh, whooping up on it today, and thank you, John, for that. But it, it's so meaningful when people that's never, that never reads the Bible, and they can see right in front of them the Word of God and the hope that there is, man, it, it, builds, it builds a way out. <clears throat> and the Lord visited Sarah as he had said. I like that, don't you? He never fails. And the Lord said unto Sarah as he had spoken. For Sarah conceived and bare Abraham a son in his old age at the set time of which God had spoken to him. And Abraham called the name of his son that was born unto him whom Sarah bare to him, Isaac. And Abraham circumcised his son Isaac being eight days old as, as God had commanded him. And Abraham was a hundred years old when his son Isaac was born unto him. Did y'all get that? <laughs> and Sarah said, God hath made me to laugh so that all that hear will laugh with me. And she said, who would have said unto Abraham that Sarah should have given children suck? For I have borne him a son in his old age. And the child grew and was weaned, and Abraham made a great feast the same day that Isaac was weaned. And Sarah saw the son of Hagar, the Egyptian, which she had borne unto Abraham, look at this word, mocking. That world is still out there. Look at verse number 10. Wherefore she said unto Abraham, <clears throat> Cast out this bondwoman and her son, for the son of this bondwoman shall not be heir with my son, even with Isaac. And the thing was very grievous in Abraham's sight because of his son. And God said unto Abraham, Let it not be grievous in thy sight because of the lad, because, and because of thy bondwoman. In all that Sarah has said unto thee, hearken unto her voice, for in Isaac shall thy seed be called. This story is generated in Galatians chapter 4, which is New Testament. Galatians chapter 4, verse 22. Most of you know that that's Old Testament. Genesis is the first book of the Bible. But look in Galatians chapter 4, verse number 22. This story comes out again because God's speaking to us about what we got to do with the two natures. In every human is the flesh nature and the spirit nature. Is the bad and the good. And if you don't deal with the flesh, it dominates you. Here in verse number 22, for it is written that Abraham had two sons. Who can name the other one? We've got Isaac on the ground. Who's the other one? Ishmael. Ishmael. That's him. For it is written that Abraham had two sons, the one by a bondmaid, the other by a free woman. But he who was of the bondwoman was born after the flesh. But he of the free woman was by promise. Skip down to verse number 27. For it is written, Rejoice thou, barren, that bearest not, break forth and cry, thou that travailest not. For the desolate hath many more children than she which hath an husband. Now we, brethren, as Isaac was, are the children of promise. But as then he that was born after the flesh persecuted him that was born after the spirit. Notice these words right here. Even so it is now. Wow. Nevertheless, what saith the scriptures? Cast out the bondwoman and her son. For the son of the bondwoman shall not be heir with the son of the free woman. So then, brethren, we are not children of the bondwoman, but of the free. Lord, we thank you for your word this morning. And we ask you, Lord, to break it out into our spirits to where it's, we can get a hold of this. Because Abraham and Isaac and Ishmael and Sarah and 
millions of others, Lord, they're done in their grave. But you're talking to us this morning in 2020. Lord, right here in the month of March, the 15th day, God, you're talking to us now through this passage. Let us get a hold of this, Lord, and ring out out of our own system everything that, don't, that doesn't belong to Christ, where we can walk in the clarity that you want us to have with you. We praise you for that now in the name of Jesus. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Amen about what? Cast out the bondwoman. Yes. Hang on to that spiritual life. <laughs> okay. I want to talk to you from the thought this morning. Let God lead. You won't be sorry. Amen. Let God lead. You won't be sorry. Friends, some of the things that gets into our life it's hard to turn loose of them. And one of the first things that you look at in this passage of Scripture or that really catches my eye is the fact of how grievous this problem was with Abraham. You can imagine how much he loved Ishmael because he has had no son before Isaac. That was the only boy on the face of the earth that's his son, even though he was born in the flesh because Sarah and him decided to help God where he could have uh, an heir to his throne. And in the process, they missed, they missed the deal. And the Lord said, if you go down to verse 13, we're not going to look at that. But in verse 13 of Genesis chapter uh, 21, the, the scripture gives reference that he's going to help, he's going to help that bond man. He's going to help Ishmael. But he's telling us that he'll never be the leader over God's house. He'll never be the leader over Canaan. He will never be the one that inherits the promise that was to Abraham and to Isaac and to Jacob and to the twelve and then that, that promise goes right on in in Galatians 4 to everyone that knows Jesus as their personal Savior. And so to, to, get, to get by that grievousness is where most people fail in their walk with Christ. In verse number, or chapter 21, uh, I think it's verse number 4, No, that's not it. Let me see if I can find it. Verse 11. I just missed it about seven or eight verses. <clears throat> and the thing was very grievous in Abraham's sight because of his son. <clears throat> Early on in Abraham's life, in chapter 12 and verse number 1 of Genesis, you don't have to go there, you're welcome to if you want to. But in, in this passage, it's the first time we hear of Abraham's name. And Abraham is called out by God. Well, he's in, he's, in, he's in the other verse too in chapter 11. But Abraham is called out by God here and he's saying, Abraham, i got something for you to do. You're going you're gonna to leave your family everything that you know here and you're going to go to a place that you don't know nothing about that's my call on your life you can know that was that was some that was some uh, that would pull some roots up to just walk away uh, but he did it and so abraham has been used to some some seem like some deep calls on his life to just to, just to walk away and leave everything behind but this this particular thing now he's in Canaan and now he's raising a, a family he's he has he has Isaac he's so proud of him is wonderful he also has Ishmael right there but when the monkery took over uh, it, it was like and, and the Lord backed what Sarah said don't don't pull up from this. This is something that must happen. And so here he is in, in, in chapter 21, verse number 11. And the thing was very grievous in Abraham's sight. In verse number 9, the bondwoman's son is mocking. And you know what? Any, any crutch uh, that comes that we have to stand on, that the devil can use to sneer over us, 
He, he, will, he wants to mock us every way He can. He does not want us to make the Christian walk one of great faith. He wants it to be a weeble wobble that don't go very far till it gets down. And that's why uh, Ishmael didn't have to monk. Isaac, he could have been proud. But because he was out of the, the, the main scene for just a minute, all, the only thing he could do was think of, I'm going to make fun of him. I'm, I'm going to make fun of him to show. And friend, look, look at the world. As you live for God, that's one of the things that the devil wants to set up for you. You try to take your stand, uh, just, just like Dawn was talking about today, she's uh, trying to tell people about the Lord and they're mocking her, making fun of her walk. Well, that, that's part of the culture of the Christian walk. And so Jesus wants to help us get by that. Cast the monking spirit out and don't let it get you down. Walk on with the Lord. Go forward. Anything that we got to have for a crutch, that's what the devil wants to come and sneer at us at and sneer us about. It's not uncommon uh, in Nehemiah chapter 4 verses 1 to 3. We'll read just a little passage of scripture here. But Nehemiah has rallied the entire of the Jews that's went home. They've rebuilt the temple. They can't have worship because the walls of Jerusalem are tore down. God sends him back to set the walls of Jerusalem up. And when, whenever the outside world found out what he came for, this is their take on it. In, in uh, chapter, chapter 4, we'll look at verse number 1 to start with. It talks about sin ballot here in chapter 4 of Nehemiah, verse number 1. But it came to pass that when sin ballot heard that we builded the wall... Isn't that what this is all about, walking with Christ? We're trying to build the walls of righteousness in our life where we can, we can keep sin out and righteousness in. But it came to pass that when somebody heard that we built the wall, he was wroth and took great indignation. And notice this word, and he, he mocked the Jews. And he spake before his brethren and the army of Samaria. So he's making fun big time. He got all that group there with him like a bully. And he said, what do these feeble Jews? They fortify themselves. Will they sacrifice? Will they make an end in a day? Will they revive the stones out of the heaps of the rubbish which are burned? So everything he's saying is downcasting their effort. In, in verse number 3, now Tobiah the Ammonite, which was right there by him, he said, even that which they build, if a fox go up, he shall even break down their stone wall. So mockery is the devil's way. He wants to take you out. He has no intentions of you making it easy. It's a fight. It's a battleground. But it's a fight worth putting into. Even though this thing was grievous to the flesh, God, God calls on Abraham to come to get by that. In, uh, I think it's in, uh, In Lot's life, he was mocked by the Sodomites, his own sons, uh, made fun of him whenever he goes to talk to them about the Lord and, and tell them that uh, Sodom and Gomorrah is fixing to be burned. And the Bible says he seen. They looked at him like he was just, he went crazy. But guess what? What was spoken came to pass. Sodom and Gomorrah really burned and they died in that. You know why? Because of that spirit, that spirit of, uh, you ain't going to tell me nothing. You're not going to, that, that's always out there in the world. And so we got to be, we got to get tough enough that that don't take us down. Be able to stand it because the Lord said, I'm, I'm going to help you. I'm going to help you through this time in your life. Um, in, in verse number 10, Of Genesis chapter 21, it shows that Sarah is telling Abraham that that boy that's mocking the son of promise is not going to be an inheritor with her son. Here it is. Wherefore she said unto Abraham, Cast out this bondwoman and her son, for the son of this bondwoman shall not be heir with my son, even with Isaac. Sarah has got a hold of this promise from the time they left, because the Lord said unto her and to Abraham, that from y'all's seed, you and Sarah, she was a hundred, or she was ninety, he was a hundred. They still got the, the, the child in their hands. They've got him circumcised, and they've weaned him, which is, I don't know how old he was. He might, I don't know how old they weaned him back then. Anyway, he was, he was old enough to have a big shindig for him. Man, they was, they was having, having a great deal. And she, that's when she puts this out, that the promise that God gave us, he's not going to back off and split it with somebody else. This is for our family. And this, the, you said the promise 
promise is coming through our child. And so the Lord tells him, don't, don't let this grieve you out. Friends, the world, the world is right there combating in our walk. All the time we're walking with Jesus, there's that combat zone. The world says, well, why don't you take this in with Christ? But friends, you've got to know that the world, which is the flesh, is not going to conform to the righteousness of Christ. So it must be put to the side. It's got to be stopped. And we've got to walk away from that to live in Jesus, even though it's grievous for a little while. We've got to go on and hear what God's got to say. The angels actually tell a lot in, in Genesis 21 or, or 19 and 17, a lot, you just can't stay here and live. Said, if you stay here, you will die. You've got to live. And they grab Lot and his wife and his two daughters by the hands and lead them out. It was grievous to leave Sodom and Gomorrah. That was their home. Everything they had was there. But the Lord said, leave or you're going to die if you stay here. And friends, it's not only in Abraham's life, but everything, every person here that's walking with Christ, we must walk away from the flesh. And the flesh is that bond woman. That's, that, that's the bondage of the world. And the spirit is that freedom, the righteousness of Christ that's brought, that's brought into our lives. In Romans chapter 7 and verse number 8 he says, But sin taken occasion by the commandment deceived me, and by it it slew me. What the, what the devil does, whatever God says no to, the devil says it's okay. That's the problematic with the world. You remember in the garden, that's where it started. Uh, Eve said, we cannot eat of that. God has said, ye shall not eat of the fruit of that tree, for in the day you eat thereof, ye shall surely die. What does the flesh, what does the world, what does that cast out demon say? You shall not surely die. And so he deceived her, and she, instead of, instead of living for the Lord, she partook of that and gave to her husband likewise. And so the Lord's talking to us now in Galatians chapter 4 that the same, the same thing that happened in Abraham's life must happen in ours. Whenever that fruit that's offered to us that's not godly, that's the flesh fruit that our flesh wants, we want it. And the Lord's saying, don't, don't, don't let that be grievous to put that to the side. Walk away from it. Walk away from it and live for God. Walk away from it and be free. Walk away from it and be the overcomer. And every time that stuff comes up, we've got to chunk it. Lord, that don't belong in this. And so, chapter 7 is the wreck of the two natures. I, I was talking to a gentleman the other day, a, a pastor of a church down close to Austin. And he, he's telling me, he said, uh, he said, you know, he said, I, I can't hardly live. He said, I can't, I don't even know where the scripture is, but he was quoting the scripture, uh, basic like this, when I would do good, evil is present. And he said, I, I find myself caught there all the time. I said, brother, you don't have to live there if you know what Romans chapter 8 verses 1 and 2 says, because that sets us free. That's why we cast it out. Nobody can take that from you. Abraham had to rise up and say, Hagar, you and Ishmael have got to go. The voice of the Lord has spoken to me. He gives her a bottle of water and some bread and sends her on. And guess what? They made it. But Isaac was protected to, to fulfill the promise that was given to him because his dad had some guts and some backbone. And because even as grievous as it was, the, the bondwoman and her child was cast out. In Romans chapter 8, the Bible says, There is therefore now, this is verse number 1, no condemnation to them who are where? In Christ Jesus. And here's the, here's the bond woman and here's the free woman who walk not after the flesh. The flesh is the bond woman. The free woman is the spirit. That's Sarai. That's Sarah. That's just had this, this baby boy called Isaac. And, and those are the, you know, when you try to walk to the world of the flesh and the spirit is like, but you can see it here so boldly because there was two women in, in Genesis or, or Galatians bears this out, Hagar and Sarah. And because you look at those two women, one of them did not receive the promise because that was of the flesh. The other one did receive the promise and her child because it was spiritual. And friends, our walk is like that. We don't walk after the bond woman. We walk after the free woman through the spirit. Now, verse number two says, 
And the spirit of life which is in, I say, for the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has done something to me. It has made me free from the law of what? Sin. I'm free from the law of sin and of death. The friends, everybody that's lived has had sin in their life. There's no doubt about that. And there's times that we fall, we jump right back up and go on. We're not a, we're not a perfect being, won't be till we reach heaven. But what happens, we quit going through the same cycles. We break the cycle of sin through the shed blood of Jesus and then we walk as close to him as we can get till we get to the portals of glory. And every time the bondwoman and her son sticks the head up, we say that's the flesh. The flesh doesn't belong here. Not in my tongue, not in what I see, not in my actions, not in my attitude. All of that's got to go and don't feel bad about it. Chunking it out of there and then the fresh love and the renewal and the power of Christ comes to fill those voids. Because the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and of death. You know what made me free? When I was willing to hear the voice of God and he says, even though it's grievous, cast it out. I was talking to a man yesterday just for a few moments. He's standing outside the cafe and I said, hey man, how you doing? He said, well, if I can, he said, I've got this real bad habit and I can't get over it. He said, I drink coffee and smoke cigarettes. I said, well, I'll tell you what, the Lord can help you. If you need to break, if you need to break the system, Jesus can help you get that done. There's a way out. And even, even though you, he said, I've been doing this since I was eight years old. That don't make no difference to God. He knows how to give you freedom. And it may not, you may have never had tobacco, but whatever's out there, that's got you in bondage. That's what's got to be kicked out of your life. And that's what sets you free and makes you the new creature. As grievous as it is, Lord, take it away from me. Let this get out of my nature. I want to walk with you. In Galatians chapter 4, verse number 29. But as then he that was born after the flesh persecuted him that was born after the spirit, even so it is, can you read this, N-O-W, it's still out there. Friend, just like Ishmael looked at that and made fun, the world still mocks Christianity. Yeah, they called Bible toters and all, all that stuff. It's all out there still. And I, I, don't, I don't condemn the world for that. That's between them and God. My hope is that they can see enough of God in me that they'll want some of what we got. And really, the world's not that good, friends. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a death trap in the long run. We want to run from the flesh and run to the righteousness of Christ. The second thing out of this, how, however grievous it was, that's the first thing we looked at. The second thing we want to look at is the hope of righteousness that's in Christ in verse number 12. As Abraham is processing this in his life, God comes on the scene to help him. And I'm, anybody that's ever laid sin down and headed for Christ, you, some of this grief comes to you, the, the, the pain of it. Uh, because the devil wants to make it as hard as he can to keep you from getting right with God. He don't want you to make it. And so he makes it as grievous as he can. He wants to make it so grievous that you throw the towel in. That you say, well, I tried it and it didn't work. But I want to tell you that it can work. And the reason it can work because Jesus Christ is on our side. Look at this verse here. And God said unto Abraham, let it not be grievous in thy sight because of the land. Now, friends, you love your children. You know Abraham loved his. He loved this boy. But he recognized if I leave this here, he's going to take over what God gave my son between me and Sarai. He's going to take that over. That Canaan's never going to be Isaac. It's going to be Ishmael's. And so he's got to go. God made me a promise he'll take care of that stuff. I can't fix that. But I can live for God. And here's God helping him. And friends, whatever's got a hold of that you're having trouble getting free from, look what we have on our side. God said unto Abraham, let it not be grievous in thy side because of the lad, because of thy bondwoman. In all that Sarah has said unto thee, hearken unto her voice for Isaac in Isaac shall thy seed be called. And friends, our heart hope is to rise up and say, Lord, I'm willing to cut it plumb through the blood. Get it off of me. Get it away from me. And let me live for Jesus till you call me home. Woo! You become a free man right here with the hope of righteousness. There's a song that says, shake off those heavy bands. 
Lift up those holy hands. Yeah. Let, let everything that sinneth give praise and honor to the glory of God. Woo. And that newness comes in. So here's what we're preaching about. Let God lead. You won't be sorry. Just stay with him. Whatever he puts his finger on and says, this is not a good way, chunk it. Cast it out. Throw it down. Man, whoa, victory. Uh, I, I was uh, visiting with a gentleman just recently, and uh, he had a, well, he looked like he had a dip of snuff. And he is part of the clergy. And... Uh, I said, you know, the, the Lord so graciously saved me. And we was visiting about the Word. Uh, and uh, uh, I was talking to him. I said, uh, I come to Jesus. I, I was so bound with, with all kinds of stuff. But said, one of, one of my problems was tobacco. And I remember walking out of the church after the Lord touched me. And it's hard. I had tried hard to, to stop smoking for my wife because her, her granddad died with lung cancer. And so she said, I'd rather you drink some than to, than to smoke. Please don't smoke. And so I told her I quit smoking, but I lied. I just smoked on the job. I didn't smoke at home. And before I'd get home, I'd take me a chew of tobacco. And uh, I'd come in. She said, you smell like you smoke. I said, well, everybody down there smokes. She said, smell of my breath. And you know what tobacco smells like. <laughs> she said, ah! <laughs> it sure did smell like smoke right there. And so I lived a lie till that night. And in my heart, I didn't have I didn't have it with me at the church. I had too much respect for that. But whenever in my heart, when I walked out of there, it all went. And I remember the next morning when I got my pickup on the way, I was throwing out my cigarettes and my snuff and the stuff under the seat and I've been free ever since then. And I, I want to tell you, it's by the power of God. I, I make no boast in Danny Williams. I'm just talking that the Lord will stand right there with you and help cast out the bondwoman and her son, everything. There's people that's never had no problem with alcohol, but it may be a grievance from the past or from your parents. You know, something that you've grown up with that, you're, that you have such a hate system, you can't break it up. When you get to Jesus, you can cast that bondage off of you. Completely, whatever. It don't matter if it's pornography, whatever. When you get to Christ, you can clean your house out spiritually. We come home, cleaned out the, the stuff out that wasn't, the, the music that wasn't right. I mean, boom, it's gone. No tears. There was just rejoicing. That rejoicing comes because, Lord, we found so much life in you and so much victory. And we found that God is walking right here with us. And God is helping us cast out the bondage. Anything that's binding me, Lord, I want it off. And so here comes the Lord. So we're shaking off those old things. And I think it's so awesome. If you go, I, I want to read the last two verses of chapter 4, which I think would be 28 and 29, and then read the first verse of chapter 5, because really this is just a continuation of what the Lord is saying to us as believers. Here we are in uh, Galatians chapter, chapter 4, verse I think it's 28 and 29. <clears throat> Now we, brethren, as Isaac was, are the children of promise. But as then he that was born after the flesh persecuted him that was born after the spirit, even so it is now. Now, I would hold right there on verse 29. I want to tell you that the next morning when I got up and drank my coffee, that the persecution came. You know why? My flesh wanted something. My flesh wanted a cigarette. Yeah. I mean, it rode me for 30 days every time I wanted to, I, I, had, I had trouble breaking that yoke. But guess what? I never went back. And you can know that the next day after Abraham sends that woman and that, that, that Isaac or Ishmael away, that there was, there was some grievous there. But he knows God spoke to me. And friends, whatever's coming down, a day, a week, a month, a year, one of these days, you'll look back and guess what? That little old, that mountain has become a molehill. It's like, it's like it has no meaning. I, I had some trouble with some, with some guys that, uh, you know, when we, was, when we was a kid, you know, running around teenagers and uh, shooting and stuff. And 
And just, just crazy. Anyway, one of those guys, I, I, I didn't know how bad I uh, you know, was still holding that grudge, but years later in the jail, here he was in the jail, and I, I, he come out to the, to, for me to minister to him, and I'm looking at him and saying, that's a guy who held a gun on me. And then the Lord said, well, he can be saved. <laughs> I said, okay, Lord. So, you know what? Right there. You know what I did? I cast out the bond woman. And her son, I said, Lord, you can love him. I can love him. Help me, help me step past this stuff. That's, that's five years ago. Man, I don't have to live in that. And you know what? I walked by it. It never bothered me. I was a free man by the grace of God. And you, you know, when you meet people that you've had an outing with and you don't want to look them in the eye, did you know all that can be broken? It can be thrown out. You don't have to go back down that road. You can look at them and like you love them. And you can. You can be free because God is walking with us. That's the promise. Here in these verses it says, But as then, as he that was born after the flesh persecuted him that was born after the Spirit, even so it is now. But look at verse number 1 of chapter 5. <clears throat> Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ has made us free. Whoa! And be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. What bondage is he talking about? Where we come from? Whatever was marking, it doesn't matter if it's alcohol or drugs or hate or, or porn, whatever's out there that's, that's had you down before. You're free from it by the grace of God. So here's what God says. Uh, Abraham, you're a week away. Way, stand fast. It's going to be okay. That baby's alive. That woman's alive. I'm going to take care of that deal. A, a month later, guess what? Stand fast. And that's what he's doing to us. Every day that we live, the Lord is living, walking right along beside us. And he said, you don't have to be in that bondage no more. I'm walking with you every step of the way. And I'm going to bring victory. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ has made us free. And be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. One of, the, one of the most serious times in my tobacco problem was about five years after, after I started preaching. And this shows how the devil wants to come back in your life. I, I had in a dream, I was up at my dad's and uh, I left, I walked out of the house and out on the front lawn was a brand new cut of red tag tinsel, and that was the kind of tobacco I chewed. And so the first thing I'd done before I picked it up, I looked around to see if anybody was watching. Now you think the devil don't set us up. I reached down there, picked that up, took the smell of it, and the next thing I knew, I took me a chew. And he, here, here's what caught my heart so bad. The frame from that, from my dream, the next frame was I was standing right here at the pulpit. And I mean, I sat straight up in the bed with tears coming down my face. I said, Lord, even in a dream, I don't want to go back to that. I want, and from that day till right now, I've never had no more problems. And friends, I, I, whatever it is out there that the devil is trying to tag you with, look at this Jesus is talking to us. Stand fast therefore in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free, and be not entangled. Don't go back. Even in a dream you can have victory. The Lord gives you control over your mind. And those scriptures are in, in 2 Corinthians chapter 10. We'll look at like, like 3, 4, 5, and 6, 2 Corinthians chapter 10. Look at these scriptures here that build us that bulwark to stop the stuff from coming into our mind where we can hold fast. 2 Corinthians, I believe it's chapter 10, like, uh, like 3. We'll start verse number 3. For though we walk in the flesh, that's the stuff we can pinch, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Whatever's had a stronghold of you is broken by Christ. Casting down, here we, are, we go to the minds and the dreams and the visions. Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God. And bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. This next scripture sets us on not defense but offense and having in a readiness to revenge all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. And what that means, if that bondwoman and that child tries to come back, you rise up with readiness to say, you don't belong here in my life no more. 
I am not bound by the flesh. I am walking in the Spirit. And friends, you, you, don't have to, you don't have to give up or fall down. Just hear what God says. Let God lead you and you won't be sorry. Amen. Woo! If he's leading, you won't be sorry. You'll be rejoicing. The Lord came and touched me and broke through. And my life has been changed by his grace and by his power. Hagar giving birth to Ishmael was a totally work of the flesh. It was man helping God. Sarah giving birth to Isaac was a miracle of God's righteousness, and it's God helping man. I was preaching several years ago in the, in the home there uh, on the 37th Street, <clears throat> Snyder Oaks. I, and I was looking over the congregation or the group that was there, and they all had lots of age on them. And I said, man, can you believe, and I was trying to get down where they were living, can you believe a 90-year-old woman was still being used by God? She has a child, and Abraham's 100, and, and so, I, I mean, nothing was said. When I got through with this woman, this woman come to me, and she says, now, Brother Danny, I've been a Sunday school teacher all my life. Well, I don't, maybe not all of her life, but she says, I've been a Sunday school teacher for years. And she says, I, I know the Bible and everything, but she says, I want to tell you something. There is no way a 90-year-old woman can have a baby. <laughs> and I said, well, you're right, except the Lord stood in her stead. And she, she, she went away. She didn't believe that Sarah was 90 when she had a child. But have me know you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. And she got it done by the grace of God, the only one I know of. But man, what an incredible feat. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse number 1. Or verse number 17, probably you can quote it, 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, what is he? He's a new creature. And what's happened? The old things are passed away. And behold, all things become new. Guess what? You get past the monking in a little while. Yes, you get past it. You're free. Woo! I can't tell you how long it's been since they offered me a dip of snuff or shook me out of stove. You know, I'm free. <laughs> By the grace of God, brand new. Now, there are other things that say that comes with you against you, but guess what? When you learn how the tactics of the devil are, you recognize, cast it out, get away from it, shut the door on it. There's no way it can come back. Old things are passed away, and behold, all things are become new. What's he saying? Let God lead. You won't be sorrow. Stay with Christ. He's going to see you through that troubled area of life. In Galatians chapter 4 and verse number 23. <clears throat> But he who was of the bond woman was born after the flesh, but he of the free woman was by promise. Our promise is not about what we can do as a carnal man. Our promise is about what we can do as a spiritual man. As we walk in the Lord, we become what he's asking us and wanting us to be. In Galatians chapter 4 and verse number 28, he says, Now we brethren, as Isaac was, are the children of promise. So we must hear that voice of God. Let it not be grievous to walk away from that old life. We're new creatures. I remember a story. I don't remember who was telling it, but a lady that was born again, and she had a tavern. That, that's how she made her living. And when she got saved, she said, I, I, just, can't, I just can't do that no more. Just, she just shut it down. She said, I don't even want to sell it. I, I can't be part of that world. I'm going to, I don't know what I'm going to do, but I can't be part of that. So she chunked the thing and went on to live for God. That's our world. Walk, whatever it takes as we walk with Jesus. Lord, keep us out of that stuff. And we're, we're doing like, I'm trading my sorrows. <laughs> and I'm trading my shame. I'm trading all that off for the glory of the Lord. When God speaks to us about sinful habits, grudges, forgiving those who have set us up for their target or unfaithfulness or our lack of dedication, it's His way of leading us back to the hope of the righteous. Let God lead. Will we be sorry? Oh no. One of these days when Jesus calls us home, that's the, that's the joy of knowing that we're going to be like Him. Woo! 
And I can look at me pretty regular until I haven't got there yet. But I sure want to be heading that way all the time. Lord, let me get better at doing righteousness and hearing your voice. Aren't you thankful that Abraham had enough God in him to say, okay, Lord, I don't understand this. It's breaking my heart, but I'm walking away. And guess what? The Lord said, I'm going to make up the difference for you. You go ahead and follow me and look what's going to come on the other side. It's going to be wonderful. In closing, there's some wonderful passages in Psalm chapter 51. And we're going to start reading in verse number 7. David here has collapsed to the world. Picked his banner back up and started walking with Christ again. Had such a wreck in his life. But now he's coming back. And look, look at these words. Purge me with hyssop and I shall be clean. Wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. Make me to hear joy and gladness that the bones which thou hast broken may rejoice. Hide thy face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Would you stand with us? <clears throat> This morning, Jesus is reaching out just like he did to Abraham. He knows that it was rough on his heart, but he also knows, he says, I'm going to go with you. I think there's some chains here today that can be broken. Just like Amber was talking about, God's got his eyes. I'm sorry, Dawn was talking about that God has his eyes on you. When maybe the world has looked off like there's no hope for you, here's the Lord saying, I want to help you. But some of you come to the piano and display whatever the Lord lays on your heart. But I'd like to give this, <clears throat> this altar call this morning to start with. If you if you thought, Lord, if I follow you, I, I'm, I don't know if I can handle this or not. But just to hear the voice of God in that in those verses where he talked to Abraham and where he's talking to the writer of Galatians, Paul, and trying to get it down to a science where we can understand the difference between the flesh and following it and following Christ. That God says, I know it's grievous, but I'm going to go with you. And maybe this morning you'd be that honest that, Pastor, there's some stuff in my life that I've struggled with and even I, I didn't want to turn it loose. But this morning I feel like the Lord is speaking into my heart. And by an uplifted hand you'd say, Pastor, would you please pray for me. I'm believing the Lord today, this thing that's been grievous in my spirit, that I can walk away from it and be free in, by the cause of Christ. Anyone this morning, we're going to give you just a few moments as we wait here in His presence. You follow the Lord, and guess what? You'll never be sorry about that. Maybe you're here this morning, you don't know Jesus in the free pardon of sin. His arms are like this. He's waiting for you to come and say, Lord, I recognize I failed you, but I also recognize you want to pick me up, dust me off, help me make it on down the road of life. That Jesus cares this morning in your life, and he loves you. And he wants to be with us and walk us through the storms of time. Anybody in the building, you know in your heart if Jesus come this morning, you wouldn't be ready. You can be ready by his grace. Okay, Lord, we praise you. We thank you for the opportunity to look at your word and, Lord, how it works in our spirits. And we ask you, God, to help us. When we look at the grievous things, Lord, that needs to come out of our life, that we can walk away from it in your name, and we praise you for it. I invite you into these altars this morning, one and all, if you would come and spend some time here saying, Lord, I want you to lead, and I know I won't be sorry.